A former aide on Donald Trump's presidential campaign says he regrets working for the Republican nominee and cannot vote for him for president. Patrick Kuguli, who was formerly the campaign's policy coordinator, denounced Trump earlier this month in a post published on LinkedIn called, I regret working for Trump and will not support him for president. Pratik joins us now from Washington, D.C. Welcome, Pratik. Thank you for having me. It's been a couple weeks since you posted that. Um, are you still denouncing Trump? I am. I have no plans to vote for Trump for president. I, now, did that come out ap after the Trump tapes, I, I'm assuming? It did. I had actually decided even before then that I would not be voting for Trump, but my plan was not to speak out publicly. Um, although I had concerns about the direction of the campaign, having been a part of the campaign, it, it didn't feel right to me early on to openly denounce the candidate, but particularly in the context of the tapes, I thought it was appropriate to speak out and was disappointed, frankly, that uh, many Republicans continued to remain loyal to Trump even after that tape emerged. Yeah, and some of them really denounced him, like Deb Fisher on a Nebraska. Uh, she condemned his remarks and, and urged him to withdraw. Only, what, a couple weeks later, she changed her tune and said she would support the Republican ticket. So it's been interesting to see uh, the different directions this is taking everybody. Well, I think there were a number of politicians and Republican political figures who were outraged by the tape and assumed that the Republican base would follow. In fact, polling showed that the Republican Party and Republican voters, by and large, uh, want to remain with Trump as the candidate. And I think a lot of politicians <laughs> Uh, buckled under the pressure and were not able to denounce him in the way that they might have otherwise. So you said you've seen some red flags. Uh, why did you wait to, to denounce him? I mean, he said quite a few disturbing things along the way. Well, look, Trump was never my first choice. I, of course, worked for a rival candidate in the primaries. And I think we had a, a talented Republican field. I think there were many candidates in the race who would have been better nominees than Trump. Uh, by the time I joined the campaign in April, uh, Trump was well on his way to winning the Republican nomination. And I assumed that particularly given that the candidate had not done a whole lot on the policy front, that he would really move to transition into a general election candidate who could unify the Republican Party and run a coherent campaign against Hillary Clinton. I think after eight years of Obama, there was every reason to believe that the Republicans had an advantage. Uh, that they could win this year and in fact win by a comfortable margin and i thought that by joining the campaign in april and working for the candidate i might be able to help maybe at the margins uh, help the candidate to develop a set of policy proposals uh, in fact not only did trump not uh, move in the direction of developing policies and being a unifying candidate uh, he very much went in the opposite direction and not only did he not develop a set of coherent policies, but time and again he showed that personally he had character flaws that were not befitting of a presidential candidate. Going back to the policies, um, have you seen any improvements since he's releasing more information, more details as it gets closer to the election? Well, there, there are several problems. Uh, one is an ideological one. Trump has been all over the map throughout his career. Um, there was always doubt in my mind whether or not Trump was in fact a genuine conservative. And I think he's proven over the course of the campaign that in fact he is not a traditional conservative. And I've been particularly disappointed the degree to which he's rolled out policies that would expand the size of the federal government. On issue after issue, there's really in many ways a very little difference between Trump and Hillary in terms of uh, the degree to which they would like to expand the scale and scope of government. Now, another factor, too, is the fact that Trump has not taken policy development seriously in the first place. I think the fact that we're now two weeks away from the general election campaign and on major issues, uh, Trump has not put out policy proposals. He hasn't even told us who his advisors are. I don't think we have any clear sense of who would go into a Trump administration. This might have been acceptable early on in the primary cycle, but at this point in the campaign, I think it reflects fundamentally on the type of leader Trump is and the cavalier attitude that he has toward serious policy matters.
And going back to, to being conservative, you know, you worked as the policy coordinator for former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee in Evangelical. Um, are evangelicals voting for Trump, or who best embodies those conservative principles? Well, I think evangelicals uh, absolutely are going to turn out and vote for Trump. And I think one of the surprises, and in my view, disappointments, uh, was that evangelical conservatives from the South typically have uh, held the Republican Party to a set of uh, social conservative values. They've tended to be provide uh, the framework or the foundation for moral values and family values within the Republican Party. Uh, Trump was never particularly socially conservative. There was nothing in his track record to believe that he was a true believing social conservative, and his personal conduct uh, certainly uh, was not socially conservative in any sense of the term. And yet, uh, evangelical conservatives not only voted for Trump, but they did so in relatively large margins. Uh, that came as a bit of a surprise, and it was a disappointment to me. And I think, uh, although I expect Trump to lose, I think he'll do so despite winning the sizable share of the evangelical vote. Uh, voters' views of Trump probably have much less to do with him personally than his rhetoric on abortion and promises to protect Christianity in America. Uh, what about Evan McMullen and, and Gary Johnson? Are evangelicals going to vote for them? I haven't seen much evidence that either Johnson or McMullen are going to overperform among evangelicals. Um, Gary Johnson is well on his way to performing quite well for a third party. I think he's probably going to uh, be the most successful third party candidate to run uh, since Ross Perot in the 92 elections. And, um, and Evan McMullen also, his success has been quite a surprise. I think he's well on his way to winning in Utah. And even if he doesn't ultimately win Utah, uh, I think his candidacy, given when he announced, given how low of a profile he had, and the fact now that he's on the ballot in 43 states, I believe, uh, is unquestionably a success. But I think insofar as he's competitive in Utah, it's not fundamentally due to the evangelical vote. I think it has much more to do with, uh, on the one hand, the Mormon vote, and then two disaffected Republicans generally who are looking for an option beyond Trump. And speaking of that, who are you supporting in this election? Well, I've decided that I'm going to vote for a third party candidate. I am still, I haven't decided who I'm gonna vote for among the third parties. But the big takeaway that I've drawn from the election is that we simply cannot limit our choices to the two major parties. I think they've clearly shown in this election campaign that both parties have nominated flawed candidates who a sizable share of the American electorate is not comfortable with and is not comfortable with for good reason. Uh, in almost every aspect of our lives, we don't tolerate two choices. We demand a marketplace of choices and we, uh, we've come to expect that we'll have a great deal of competition. And I see no reason why our political system ought to be any different. We should not simply be beholden to two candidates from two outdated political parties. And a lot of people are making that argument and saying they're going to vote for the, these third party candidates. However, on the other hand, some people are saying it's just going to be a wasted vote. It's coming down to two candidates. It's going to be either Trump or Clinton. And you're wasting your vote if you vote for one of those third party candidates. Well, I, I strongly disagree with that theory. Um, the fact of the matter is that even if we have only one person winning the presidency, uh, the margin by which they win matters. And the degree to which they'll actually be able to enact their policies will depend in large part on the mandate that they have coming out of this election. If a candidate wins the presidency but does so only with 30-something percent of the vote, uh, the president's options are constrained compared to if they win the presidency by well over 50 percent. So that's one argument, but I think more importantly, we have to begin to lay the groundwork for serious alternative parties to emerge. And we can't expect that to happen overnight. I think if a third party wins 5 percent one year, then 8 percent another year, then 10 percent another year, uh, over time, that's how you develop a more institutionalized third party or fourth party that can really compete with the other major party candidates. Do you suspect that a branch of the Republican Party is going to break off after this election? 
It's hard to say. Um, I certainly think that Republicans should be looking at that as a serious option. I think conservatives have, lear have learned the hard way that the Republican Party uh, is not entirely committed to conservative values, and the Republican Party cannot be a reliable or dependable vehicle to enact conservative policies. And so I very much hope that conservatives will look at a serious third party option. But I think whether or not a rival third party uh, emerges will have a lot to do with Hillary Clinton. Uh, I expect her to win, but the question is, will she govern from the center and in a unifying way, or will she pursue a set of far left uh, policies that end up unifying an otherwise fractured Republican party? And I think that uh, we have to see about that. And that's a question on a lot of voters' minds. Patrick Kuguli, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.